Hey everybody, I wanted to do a video today on spirit communication, a demonic invitation. Uh, I did an article on it recently and I have it on my website at www.exposingtheenemy.com and it starts with an X first, not an E. Um, I put this on there a few months ago, but I wanted to share it on YouTube and that way that there is a video version of it. Um, anyway, I'll go ahead and start. Sitting in front of a television set, flipping through the channels, chances are that you will find at least one show that involves some sort of spirit communications. With so many shows dedicated to paranormal investigations or psychic phenomena, one can easily understand why spirit communications is accepted by society and why most people see no harm in it. And while it is heavily pushed by the media, the church remains silent. No one is speaking out about it in church. The statistics of how many Christians that sit in churches every week, but yet believe in earthbound spirits, would most likely be somewhat of a shocking number, considering what the Bible says about it. All communication techniques are against God's word. All spirit communication involves contact with demonic spirits. I often shake my head when I hear ghost hunters warn against the use of Ouija boards. What they do not understand is that all forms of spirit communications are an abomination to God, according to the Bible. Using an Ouija board is no different than using dowsing rods, a pendulum, tarot cards, ghost meters, trigger objects, or even a simple voice recorder. Realistically, they all do the same thing. They are all used with the in intention of communicating with the dead. There are different reasons why people communicate with the dead or attempt to. Probably the most common reason would be because of the grief one feels after losing their loved ones and their dis desire to have contact with them, wanting so badly to feel that they are still here with them. Another reason would be is our natural fear of death and curiosity of what is in store for the, us for the hereafter. Unresolved issues is also a, a reason people attempt to communicate with the dead. Those issues could range from unanswered questions from our deceased loved ones or it could also be things such as unresolved crime-related issues. An example of this would be a police officer that would contact a psychic in an attempt to gain information related to crimes committed surrounding the death of an individual. Another reason would be an unhealthy attraction to darkness. There can be a thrill in becoming fearful in certain situations. An example of this would be when someone wants to watch a scary movie and they find themselves under covers with one eye peeking around the sheet that is in their clenched fist, daring to watch the whole movie. But when the scene gets too scary, they pull the sheet over both their eyes, but only to pull their sheet back again, only seconds later attempting to watch it again. There is a thrilling factor to it. But that scary feeling that we get when we do these things is our natural feelings of in our conscience that tells us it's not good and it is rather evil. Ghost hunting has also, also has a thrilling effect, an, a fura effect, that is something that there's something about sitting in a dark room and all the with all the up-to-date ghost hunting gadgets daring to do what others are too afraid of doing, feeling somewhat like a spiritual daredevil, <laughs> challenging one's fearful side. Sometimes we come ac across ghost hunters that become provocative when communicating with these spirits. They will try to challenge these spirits. This is exceptionally dangerous. Why is this dangerous, one might ask? Because spirits have not flesh and blood like we have. We cannot fight a spiritual battle using physical weapons. These spirits are only subject to Jesus. The on, they can only do what God allows them to do, as you see in Job 1. The only time a human has authority over demonic spirits 
is when they are born again, believers in Jesus Christ, that are in obedience to God's word. Mark 16, 17 says, Jesus gives specific instructions to all believers, telling them that all those who believe in the name of Jesus will have authority to cast out devils. Jesus only gives this authority to cast out devils to believers. Unbelievers do not have that right. For example, in Acts 19, in verses 13 through 16, the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over which had evil spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, saying, We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preacheth. And there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jew and, and chief of priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. As I stated above, the only time a human has authority over demonic spirits is when they are born again, believers in Jesus Christ that are in obedience to God's word. The reason I mentioned in obedience to God's word is because even if we claim to have to believe in Jesus, if we dabble in the occult by doing things that God forbids us to do, we are in danger. In doing these things, in a sense, we have, we're leaving God's umbrella of protection. Like it says in Proverbs 1, 33, But whoso hearkened unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from fear of evil. If the enemy merely shows himself as the evil being that he truly is, people would do whatever it took to avoid him. But the fact is, he is very deceptive, and he will use whatever tactic that, be that best suits you to destroy you. He sifts us as wheat. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. God forbids necromancy and divination in his holy word. Some often wonder, why is it wrong to talk to my deceased loved one? I'm not hurting anyone by doing this. But the truth is, all of God's laws and commandments are in place for our own protection. It's not because he wants to withhold anything good from us, but instead to protect us from something bad. God tells us in his word that when we die, we immediately go to either heaven or hell. And the Bible says that once someone is in the heaven or hell, there is a great gulf fixed in place that makes it impossible for those that are in either place to return to earth, even if it is to go warn or talk to the living. Please see Luke 16, 19 through 31. So if these spirits are not the departed spirits of our dead loved ones, who or what are they? The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 11:14 that we should take no marvel for Satan himself transforms as an angel of light. Demonic spirits will mimic the dead. They are called familiar spirits. Familiar spirits are familiar with the person they mimic as they have followed them, that family, down through their generations, which is the reason why they know so much about the deceased person and their family. And the Bible tells us that they will deceive and defile us. As you see in Leviticus 19, verse 31, or Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 18, verse 10, or 2 Chronicles 33, 6, or Leviticus 20 and 6, or Isaiah 16, I mean 19 and 3, and Isaiah 8 and 19. In Isaiah, it says, And when they say unto you, Seek not them that have the familiar spirits, and go and unto wizards that peep and mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? God wants us to seek him regarding the dead. He gives us all truth in his word. On the other hand, the familiar spirits lie and will tell us things that are not true, things that directly conflict with God's word. The belief in earthbound spirits alone is an attack on God's word and his truth. This belief is contrary to what the Bible tells us. One example would be that when unsaved people die, they do not go to hell. 
This is one thing that it does. It tries to take away the fear of hell. It gives a false sense of hope to unbelievers while it takes away the true hope given to the believers. This is the reason God forbids necromancy and divination. Satan is here to try to deceive us and he will masquerade as our dead loved ones. You see, he always mimics something good, something that will appeal to us. He wants to gain our trust. When you have a person that is suffering from grief of losing someone dear to them, the enemy will take advantage of the opportunity and try to deceive them. This is why in most cases, people will experience paranormal activity right after someone that they know dies. People want so badly to believe and hold on to their dead loved ones while it is very difficult for them to accept the fact that they are no longer here. This is a very cruel tactic of the enemy. Weighing the evidence. It's very interesting to know how many ghost hunters or psychics, etc., truly rely on their own senses and trust what these spirits tell them. When coming to a conclusion in paranormal cases, the evidence that is always presented as proof of ghosts, earthbound spirits, or of our departed loved ones include things such as EVP recordings, leaving having to trust in what the spirits tell them, Photographs of paranormal ab anomalies, familiar spirits can appear as ghosts, temperature readings of the area during the investigation, EMF readings, again, this can be manipulated by demonic spirits, video footage of paranormal activity, or information given through a medium or psychic. Demonic spirits are also known to do this as even many in paranormal psychic communities even agree that these occurrences do happen at times, but they deny the possibility that this is perhaps always the case. All of the types, all of, the types of evidence above are determined by using our natural senses. But where the deception comes in is this. When we determine the presence of a spirit, we do not have the natural ability to distinguish whether the spirit is that of a deceased loved one or if the spirit truly is demonic. And we cannot go by our own feelings either, as the Bible tells us in Proverbs 14 and 12. There is a way which seemeth right to a man, but in the end thereof are the ways of death. And in Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Proverbs 3 and 5, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lead not unto thine own understanding. Therefore, we must seek God's word and what he says, his word tells us in 2 Corinthians, 7, 2 Corinthians 5 and 8, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. There's nothing in between. And it says, Hebrews 9 and 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. And if you look at the story in, in La, uh, Luke 16 and 22 through 31, it says, And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels unto Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torment and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am torment, tormented in this flame. But Father, but Father Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou would send us him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Father, I mean, Abraham saith unto him, 
they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one were, would went unto them from the dead, they would repent. And he said unto them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they become persuaded, though one rose from the dead. The scripture above from Luke 16 is very clear. It tells us that immediately when we die, we are either carried by angels to heaven, or we lift up our eyes being in everlasting torment in flames. It also tells us that there is a great gulf fixed in place so that anyone in heaven or hell cannot leave. And most importantly, this scripture tells us that God will not allow one to come back from the dead, even if it is to warn others. And if God were to have any exceptions to this rule, it would definitely be for the gospel's sake. There is not a more important message than the gospel. Testing the spirits. Humans are limited, having to depend on our natural senses. We have a flawed nature. Naturally, we determine truth by our experiences through our five senses. Some people believe in a sixth sense, but this sense is something that cannot be explained naturally. This phenomenon is supernatural and actually comes from the spiritual realm. But we must take caution as there is no true way to determine scientifically, naturally, if it comes from God or if it comes from the demonic realm. God gives believers different gifts, but these gifts are from the Holy Spirit. One of the gifts are discerning of spirits. But the test that the individual would do would be to test the situation or the information given by the word of God. Does this information line up with scripture? Many people believe that discerning of spirits is the distinguishing of whether a spirit is a trapped human spirit or a demonic spirit. But this idea is not biblical and is not found in scripture anywhere. Rather, it is used to distinguish between teachers who are empowered by the Holy Spirit or teachers empowered by unholy demonic spirits, spirits of Antichrist. For example, if a person appeared to someone and claimed to be the spirit of a small child, immediately the person would know this isn't possible because the Bible clearly tells us that spirits cannot be cannot leave heaven or hell for unresolved issues. So the person would know that this is a familiar spirit. As you see in James 4, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many have false prophets had gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. This is the Spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it shall come, and even now already is in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Ye, we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. If for any reason you believe the spirits of our departed loved ones are indeed still here with us, please do this one thing. Test the spirits to see if they are of God or not. We need to compare the situation and what is being said with scripture. And if for some reason you have an encounter with the spirit, you can ask the spirit, do you believe that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh and that he died on the cross and rose again from the dead? See what the spirit tells you and then command any and all evil spirits to leave in the name of Jesus. If you do these things, be rest assured you will find out the true identity of these demonic spirits that are masquerading as our dead loved ones. When people test these spirits this way, the reactions of these spirits and their submission to the name of Jesus Christ is usually all it takes, as this is proof of the authority and power of Jesus Christ and the true identity of these demonic spirits. So I hope that this video helps you. Um, I I uh, I hope that um, uh, you are blessed by it in some way. 
And I really thank you for, for watching this video. Um, so God bless you guys. Have a wonderful week. Goodbye.